Hey everyone, this is the second part of this tutorial. In the last video we did an introduction to the differential drive robot simulation project. And now it's time for implementation. So we will start by stating the structure of the code. Before that, please consider subscribing to the channel and activating the notification bell. It's free and you can always unsubscribe if you don't like the content. We will create two classes. The robot class that contains the variables and methods associated with the robot itself and the environment class that contains the methods responsible for tasks like showing the text and the trail and so on. The outside of the classes will be a space for initialization and declare of some variables that can be changed by the user. Under that will be the main loop because as you know the animations are just a bunch of images displayed after one another in a certain speed. This will create the illusion of movement. We begin by importing the pygame and the math libraries. After that we create the environment class and declare the init method that takes the dimensions of our world map as argument. The init method will contain our variables so we will begin by declaring some colors which are just tuples that contains the RGB values of a certain color. And then we will separate the dimension variable into two variables, height and width. The name of the window that will contain the animation will be set simply by doing this. Pygame, display and then set caption. You can specify any name. We will test our project along the way, so it is suitable to create the animation loop right now. First, we initialize Pygame, choose a start position for the robot and declare a flag that indicates whether the project is running or not and provide a way to quit the execution at any time. Then we create an instance of the environment class and provide the map dimensions. Now for the animation loop, we just create a while loop that runs as long as the running flag is set to true. Inside it we will loop through the different events that is occurring in our window and check if the type of any of them is of type quit. The quit event occurs when the red exit button of the window is pressed. If that happens then we will set the running flag to false and that will immediately close the window. In every iteration we will update the display window and fill it with our background color which is black. And if you run this now you will see the black background and the quit button is working properly. Now it's time to create the robot class. The init method will take the robot start position and its image and its width as arguments. And also initialize the velocities of the wheels. One centimeter per second is a convenient value in my approximation. Of course it is written here in meters per second, but we, as mentioned in the introduction video, we need to convert this to pixels per second. This is done by multiplying by this number 3779.52. And set the right wheel's velocities to have the same initial value. Then we declare some maximum and minimum velocities. Our robot will be loaded as a PNG image, the same image we downloaded earlier. And you can load it this way. Now we declare a rotated image variable and initialize it to the original image. This rotated variable serves the role of a temporary vessel because if you use the original and rotate it again and again and again you will be a one-story individual it will be gradually corrupted until it becomes unrecognizable so we will avoid that by copying the original to this variable and rotate it and then when we need to rotate again we just copy the original again to this variable and rotate it we will see how this works in a bit We'll create a method for drawing the robot now. That will take the map as an argument and inside it we will call the pygame method blit and give it the rotated image to draw. As for the position of where we want to draw it, it have to be given as a rect object. This can be done this way. We take the rect object of the rotated image that describe the corners of the image after the rotation and specify its center as the new calculated x and y coordinates of the robot after it's moved. 
and we end up with a rectangle that is translated and rotated as we desire. We then just pass it to the bleach method. Now it's time for testing for what we did so far. We head down and declare an instance of the robot class giving it the map and the robot image path and the width of the robot in this case is 1 cm. I think this is a little bit small but we will experiment with it later. All we have to do now is to draw the robot in the animation loop and run the code. Of course the robot is not moving now we have to add another method to achieve this. The move method will take only the screen event if it's available. This will allow us to control it using the keyboard strokes. We put a condition, if there is an event then check if it's a key being pushed. If it's true then based on the key being pressed we perform a different action. For example, if the number 4 on the keypad is pressed then we increase the velocity of the left wheel. If the key 1 is pressed then we decrease it. Key 6 and 3 are for the right wheel velocity. Next is the most important part of this video. It's how to translate this mathematical model of the vehicle movement to code. The first two equations are for the velocity or change of position of the robot in the x and y direction. And as you see, it's a function of the speeds of the wheels and the current heading or orientation of the robot. We directly add the change in position to our coordinates and we simply type VL plus the self VR by cosine of theta. And in the end we multiply by delta time. Doing this will make our movement dependent on time and not on frame rate. So even if the frame rate changes, the movement will remain smooth. I will declare the dt variable before the loop and inside I will calculate this way. Pi game time get ticks will get you the lapse time since the init method was called the last time and its value will be in milliseconds. So this is the current time minus the last time that is the time value when the last time we did this calculation over 1000 to get this result in seconds. Lastly, we reinitialize the value of the last time variable to use it in the next iteration. We get back to our mathematical model now and we write the code for the y-axis movement in the same way except for the sign this time is minus because as we said in the last video, the y-axis of the robot frame is in opposite directions compared to the screen. The change in the heading angle theta is the VR minus VL over the robot width. This implies that the bigger the robot width, the wider the turn is gonna be. We apply the change in orientation to our robot image by rotating it using rod zoom. The first argument is the original image and the second is the amount of rotation in degrees with scale of 1 meaning no change in size we get the rectangle object of the rotated image and locate it in the calculated position of our robot to test this we head down to the loop and call the move method in two places here and also inside the event loop the effect of this is gonna move our robot even if we don't press any keys. It will just remember the last velocities and act on them. If we want to change the velocities we just press a key. And that will trigger an event that will be provided as an argument. Our work here is nearly done. The robot move in the world map as desired. All that left is to output our speed and angle information to the screen and create some trail to see the trajectory traveled by the vehicle. After declaring the write info method, we will give it the speed and the heading angle as arguments. Next, we we'll declare the text variable as a formatted string to hold our information. We also need to take care of the font and size of the character and that requires declaring a font object. 
up in the init method of course with the size of 50 and then we call the method render that specify the colors of the text and its background and we conveniently named our variable to text the writing location is important so we create a rectangle object and then assign the center to where we like it to be displayed after we finish the initialization we go back to the method write info and assign the text variable to be corresponding to our arguments and we render using the blitz method giving it this text and the rect object we call the method we just created from the animation loop and providing the wheels velocities and the angle and it works as expected very good the trail effect is a simple to make we just need position of the robot and we will create a list that will hold our robot position history this list will work as a first in first out queue so every time the robot position changes the new position will be appended to this list until its size exceeds a certain limit then we will be deleting the oldest element on the list before adding any new one and that will keep a constant trail length we loop through the list and draw the line between the position in moment t and t plus one and so on until we reach the last element i have chosen the color yellow but you are free to choose wherever you like if the trail size reaches 3000 elements then we said we remove the oldest one and we append the robot position anyways we call the trail method from the animation loop and as we see it's being successfully rendered but it looks too short we will try a length of 30,000 instead of 3,000 but again that's up to you before I forget if you want to draw the robot reference frame then all you have to do is this declare the robot frame method and provide the position and orientation of the robot the position of the center point should be separated into the x and y components then we create two other points namely x axis and y axis these points will be connected to the center to create the reference frame but how to create them using the power of mathematics we create a point in a certain angle from another point using this equation the angle in the case of the x axis will be minus the heading angle of the robot in the case of the y axis will be minus the rotation angle plus the pi over 2 to make a right angle and n is the distance of these points from the center point then you simply draw the lines as shown here and as usual call the method from the main loop as we see the robot is moving in circular trajectories formerly known as clothoids the heading and the speed are both controlled by the user so an important note here is that the width of the robot in our case was assigned arbitrarily at first to one centimeter which is 37.8 pixels and that's wrong because the png picture we used is 80 pixels in width so just reset this value to 80 pixels and you're good to go except for one detail the robot goes under the writings on the screen to fix this move the robot draw call under the info call and that uh, should make things as run as expected in here we reset the theta orientation angle to zero if it completes one turn and set the max and min velocities of the right and left wheels to our pre-declared values
And it seems I made a mistake here because the minimum speed should be negative, not positive. We just correct this mistake and our work is done. We can pin some points on the map and let the robot navigate through them autonomously and even those waypoints can be assigned automatically by a path planning algorithm that finds a path through some obstacles but that's a project for another day. What I have left now is to say goodbye and see you next time with a new idea. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, subscribe and share.